psychology and many other disciplines rely on the p-value to interpret data. But can we trust p? You might think of p as the strength of evidence. There's an effect. Lower the p, stronger the evidence. There's language to talk about p-values. Less than 05, significant. Between 05 and 10, approaching significant or running away from it. This language suggests truth. Three stars, an effect exists. Greater than 10, it doesn't. Think how you feel. Three stars, yay. Between 05 and 10, frustration, so close. And P really matters. Three stars, fame. Greater than 05, a waste of effort. Maybe no PhD. So the p-value determines what we believe and what gets published. Does it deserve so much faith? If p reveals truth, a replication should reveal the same truth, so give roughly the same p. Or we could ask, is p a reliable measure of strength of evidence? If so, repeating the experiment should give about the same p. Our basic question, if you repeat an experiment, how much will p vary? If p deserves our trust, the answer needs to be not too much. Let's mark the moods of p-values. Three stars, jump for joy, bright red trumpet. Two stars, upbeat clarinet. One star, okay. Between 05 and 10, question mark, a bit blue, trombone. Greater than 10, blue depression, deep trombone. Now the simulation to see how P varies as we repeat an experiment. Suppose your pep up therapy increases well being scores by 10 on average. Here's the control population, mean 50, and the experimental population, mean 60. Teachers normally distributed, standard deviation 20. Population effect size is 10, that's half a standard deviation. So standardised effect size, delta, equals 0.5, a medium size effect. Our control and experimental groups each have n equals 32. Run one experiment. The blue dots mark the scores for 32 control participants. Here's their mean and 95% confidence interval. Here are scores of 32 pep-up participants and their mean and confidence interval. We uh, focus on the difference, so here's a difference axis, zero lined up with a control sample mean. The green dot marks the sample difference and here's the confidence interval on that difference. This experiment estimates the effect of pep-up to be about 15. Another experiment, first result drops down, and the second estimates the effect to be just a little more than 15. Run repeated experiments. This dotted line marks 10, the true effect of PEP-UP. These intervals bounce around, and in the long run, about 95% will capture the true value. Just the occasional one, such as here, will just miss. Now, p-values. Run an experiment. Here's its two-tailed p-value. The confidence interval does not include zero, so p is less than 05. Another experiment. The interval does include zero. p is greater than 05. Run many experiments and look at these p-values. They're anywhere from three stars to 0 0.48, 0 0.58. It seems you can get just about any p-value. We'll collect a lot of p-values into a frequency histogram to study how p varies with replication. The latest experiment gives one star, marked by this highlighted square in the one star column and this small figure. Here's the distribution of p-values. They vary across the full range from 3 stars to greater than 1.0. The statistical power is 0.52. 
meaning in the long run, 52% of experiments give P less than 05. So the 1, 2 and 3 star columns will total 52%, as they pretty much do. You might suspect trickery. Have I chosen some weird extreme case? Absolutely not. Two groups of 32 is quite large for psychology. 0.5, a solid medium size effect. Also, studies have found that in many areas of psychology, the median power of published research to find a medium size effect is about 0.5. My simulation is typical for much of psychology. Doing a typical experiment amounts to closing your eyes and choosing a random interval from those on screen, a random p-value from the column here. It's p-value roulette, and the histogram gives the probabilities of the different outcomes of a spin of the p-roulette wheel. Let's visit the p-value casino. Say when you want to stop and see what result your experiment gives. Oh dear. Oh dear. Ah, two stars. Getting two or three stars may be more a matter of luck than skill. Here's another way to illustrate how P varies for our typical experiment, the dance of the P values. The conclusion has to be that P is a highly unreliable measure. Whatever the P you obtained, it could easily have been very different just by chance. For a typical experiment, P tells you virtually nothing. You simply can't trust P. Here's the histogram for PowerPoint 5.2. Change the population effect size delta and see separation between the distributions, power, and the histogram all changing. This ESCII simulation lets you play around with features of your experiment and see how the distribution of P changes. In just about every realistic case, p-values show dramatic variability. With effect size 0.5, vary the sample size and see power and the distribution of p changing. With n equals 62, large samples, power is 0.8, often considered acceptable power. The dance of the p-values gives more trumpet, but still p-values jumping all over the place. Would you like your tenure dependent on winning this version of P Roulette? Back to our typical experiment. Of course, a real-life researcher doesn't know about the populations or the true size of the effect and has only a single experiment. But now, in your mind's eye, you know about the infinite sequence of experiments. Which gives a better idea of the infinite set? your interval or p-value. I suggest knowing one interval does tell you about the whole infinite set. Its width gives some idea of how much the means bounce around with replication. In dramatic contrast, a single p-value tells you virtually nothing about the whole set. It's simply one value chosen randomly from the histogram, which has enormously wide spread. A confidence interval is much more informative than a mere p-value. Medicine adopted confidence intervals more than 20 years ago, and meta-analysis to combine evidence over studies. We shouldn't let P control our research decision-making. It's simply not reliable. You just can't trust P. Here's psychology struggling out of the P swamp into the promising garden of confidence intervals. <laughs> 